Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. This week we will be examining some of the notable fossil animals uncovered from the Eocene Asian deposits, so let's get started. The Eocene was a golden age for Oviraptorosaurs. Due to the abundance of tropical and subtropical forests across the whole of the Northern Hemisphere, there were plenty of readily available food supplies for these most omnivorous of theropods. This abundance, coupled with the presence of land bridges connecting North America and Eurasia, led to an extraordinary evolutionary diversity. While some Oviraptorosaurs became increasingly large and predaceous, others moved in the direction of herbivory or granivory. One example of the latter were the early Avimimids. Descended from the odd late Cretaceous Avimimus, these basal Oviraptorosaurs were quite common in Paleogene Asia. All genera were fairly similar in outward appearance, being small, 1.5 to 3 meters long, cursorial, galliform like herbivores. Their diet, like their larger modern descendants, consisted mostly of fruit, leaves and seeds. Hetangia asiatica was a rather typical Eocene avimimid from the Ypresian stage of the Ling Cha formation, China. Known from a single fragmentary specimen consisting of hind limb elements, tail vertebrae and roughly half of the torso without the head and neck. From these remains we can confidently state that Hetangia was a 2 meter long cursorial omnivore slash herbivore with long legs, short forelimbs and a stubby tail. This overall form remained consistent for avimimids throughout the Eocene and into the early Oligocene. However, with the expansion of grasslands during the Miocene and the extinction of the Ornithomimosaurs, avimimids would increasingly replace retreating forests for the open plains. In the history of life on Earth, there are sometimes significant gaps in the fossil record. On Alter Earth, one of the most notable examples of this are the Cenozoic members of Microraptoria. Despite having explored many Paleocene age deposits across the Northern Hemisphere, paleontologists have so far failed to uncover any remains of Microraptorian dromaeosaurs in these strata. So, when a Chinese expeditionary team uncovered fossilised bones belonging to a member of this clade in the early Eocene Ling Cha formation of Hunan province, there was a sense of surprise and shock from the scientific community. This animal came to be known as Corvalestes, named after its crow-like overall size and presumed predatory lifestyle. Known from a single poorly preserved specimen consisting of a confusing jumble of bones, there is not much that we can say for certain about Corvalestes. Based on the holotype, representing approximately 20% of the whole animal, Paleontologists have come to the conclusion that this was a generalised semi-arboreal carnivore roughly one metre in length. The tail was long, making up over half the total length of the animal. The hind limbs were slender with well-developed sickle claws on the feet, suggestive of a life spent partially in the trees. The head, neck and left forelimb are completely missing from the holotype, as are any traces of life integument. However, it can safely be assumed that Corvalestes possessed a fully feathered coat with pinacious wing and leg feathers for use in gliding. As such, the restoration shown here should be regarded as speculative until more well-preserved fossils come to light. In addition, there has been some disagreement over the taxonomic placement of this animal. In its size, adaptations and presumed environmental niche, Corvalestes resembles the early Cretaceous Microraptor and its relatives. However, phylogenetic studies have placed Corvalestes in varying positions in Microraptoria. It has been noted that, due to an incredibly long ghost lineage required for Corvalestes to be a descendant of Microraptor, the similarity between these genera may be down to convergent evolution. Corvalestes could have evolved from a small Hesperonychus-like ancestor, that became increasingly adapted for a life in the trees, but for now this remains pure speculation. Other Microraptorians have been discovered in Eocene deposits, particularly at the Messel Pit in Germany, but these animals were significantly more derived than Corvalestes. For now, the case of the missing Microraptorians must remain an open one. 
Many interesting dinosaur specimens have been recovered from the Middle Eocene deposits of Pondun, Myanmar. However, unlike contemporary fossil sites in China and North America, Southeast Asian dinosaur remains are quite rare with poor rates of preservation. This is likely due to the fact that the tropical forests covering this region facilitated the rapid decomposition of carcasses and, without extensive lakes to preserve their remains, escape notice in the fossil record. Thus, the specimens that have been recovered tend to be in a rather shabby condition. One frustrating example of this phenomenon was Pondonornis. With a holotype consisting of an articulated semi-complete pair of hind limbs and roughly three quarters of its tail vertebrae, this microreptorian andromiosaur's identity is something of a mystery. No close relatives have been found anywhere else in Eocene Asia. It is almost certainly not a member of the more derived Ciboraptorid family, but also shows specialisations for an arboreal lifestyle than more base animals such as Corbolestes. Its long hind limbs and large pedal claws suggest that this animal was an adept leaper, pouncing on unsuspecting mammals, lizards and small birds. Although the front half of Pondongornis is unknown, the long tail and adaptations for leaping suggest a possible relationship with the modern Microraptorian family Saltovanatoridae. These arboreal predators are widely dispersed across the forests of the Old World, gliding from tree to tree using their feathered forelimbs. Like a combination of Kalugo, Tarsia and arboreal feline, Saltovanatorids are the terror of nocturnal mammals and lizards everywhere. Without a complete specimen, these similarities may simply be down to convergent evolution. We have no idea if Pondongornis was capable of gliding, so the restoration here must be regarded as speculative. For now, this little leaper occupies a unique position on the Microraptorian phylogenetic tree, sandwiched between basal Corvalestes-like forms and the Saltovanatorids. While the massive Tyrannosaurids lorded over the Paleogene world, several other groups of large theropods were pushed into the background. One of the most notable examples of this trend were the Allioramoids. These gracile, long-snouted Tyrannosauroids originated in late Cretaceous Asia with the genus Allioramus, and with the transition to the Cenozoic, seems to have remained endemic to that continent. Although these animals were sometimes considered Tyrannosaurids in certain studies before the discovery of Alter Earth, Genetic material extracted from living Allioramoids has demonstrated that they form a sister group to their much larger Tyrannosaurid cousins. In general, Allioramoids, both living and extinct, show a number of adaptations for a cursorial predaceous lifestyle. Their hind limbs are proportionally long and muscular, with blunt pedal claws that function like cleats while running. As with the Tyrannosaurids, Allioramoids possessed very short forelimbs with two almost useless digits that played no part in capturing prey. Instead, Allioramoids used their long slender jaws full of serrated backward curving teeth to grab small ornithischians, oviraptorids and ornithomimosaurs after a short chase. Early Allioramoids dwelt in the tropical forests of Paleocene Asia and seemed to have actively avoided competition from the Tyrannosaurids by shrinking in size and adopting an increasingly cursorial mode of predation. These two closely related groups have almost never been found in the same fossil beds, suggesting different environmental preferences. Pangu tyrannus gracilis was a rather basal allioramoid from the early Eocene Ling Cha formation of southern China. Measuring up to 7 metres in length, P. gracilis inhabited the niche of cursorial ambush predator. It was the largest predator in its environment, with Tyrannosaurids being entirely absent from this formation. As with all Eocene Allioramoids, P. gracilis was a rare animal known only from a single specimen. Indeed, only four Allioramoid genera have been recovered from Eocene Asian deposits across the entire continent. However, with the dawn of the Oligocene and the thinning of Asia's tropical forests, the Allioramoids would suddenly find themselves without any competition. Their massive cousins were felled by this intense period of climate change, but the Allioramoids managed to survive with their low diversity entirely unaffected. 
Not to be confused with the carnivorous theropod of the same name, Indoceratosaurus was a small, slender pachycephalosaur native to India and Myanmar during the Bartonian stage of the Middle Eocene. Measuring 1.5 metres in length, this animal was a descendant of basal pachycephalosaurs that survived the end Cretaceous extinction event and continued to form minor components of the dinosaur faunas of Asia. Early relatives from the Paleocene include Megnosaurus and Stegocephaly. Indoceratosaurus belongs to the more derived clade of Ankylotarsiforms, specifically with the Nanocorni branch. Ankylotarsiforms are distinguished from other pachycephalosaurs by the possession of a high tooth count formed into chopping batteries similar to those of hadrosaurs or ceratopsids. These features would allow these animals to eventually become the premier grazers of the old world after the extinction of the hadrosaurs there at the Eocene or Ligocene transition. During the Paleogene though, Ankylotarsiforms were rare and rather marginal small browsers living in a world dominated by hadrosaurs and ceratopsians. Unlike the larger pachycephalosaurs around at the time, Nanocornians lacked extensive cranial ornamentation. Their skulls were often flat, with only a slightly thickened dome and displayed adaptations for fast running. Despite lacking spectacularly ornamented heads, Indoceratosaurus and relatives did possess one striking feature, sharp horns projecting from their squamosal and jugal bones. Presumably used for display, this feature is another important anatomical feature that unites all ankylotarsiforms. Indeed, all modern members of this clade possess similar squamosal horns, plus many more extending from the rear of the skull in some genre, but more on that subject another time. Thank you for listening everyone. Next week I'll be covering another Congo cryptid, but this time it will not be another prehistoric reptile. Instead, we will be looking at the strange tales surrounding the Jibba Fofi, giant dog-sized funnel-webbed spiders. To all the arachnophobes out there, you have been warned. Thank you very much, and cheerio!